Joel Embiid quickly became the best player in his high school class once he officially made his NBA debut in October 2016. He's arguably the best center in the NBA outside of Nikola Jokic, and coming off his most dominant season as the league MVP, Embiid is looking to solidify his legacy with an NBA championship. But believe it or not, Embiid was not the top ranked recruit in his high school class back in 2013. He only started playing basketball at 16 years old after coming over from Cameroon and was actually kicked out of his first ever high school practice, but Embiid's natural athleticism and feel for the game quickly skyrocketed his high school ranking. Embiid didn't end up even being top 5 in his high school class, and he missed his entire first two seasons in the NBA, yet he persevered and is now one of the best players in the game today. This is what happened to every high school prospect ranked above Joel Embiid. At number one, we have Andrew Wiggins. After high school, he committed to Kansas and spent one year there. He averaged around 17 points and five rebounds with a steal and a block and pretty much solidified his place as the number one overall pick. And with that, he was drafted first overall by the Cleveland Cavaliers. But only two months in, he was traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves for Kevin Love. He did end up winning Rookie of the Year of the Timberwolves, but he never really played up to what people expected him to in Minnesota. He was always a really good scorer, really solid defender though overall, but really didn't get credit for it. But still, people kind of criticized his game because he wasn't the most efficient player at first, and really his passing and rebounding and other things about his game didn't develop as quickly as maybe most thought. And only six years into his Minnesota tenure, he was traded near the 2020 trade deadline to the Warriors for D'Angelo Russell. But after coming to the Warriors, he quickly became one of the premier 3 and D wings in the NBA. He greatly improved his three-point shooting to around 38-40%. He became an excellent rebounder, which was really highlighted by his play in the 2022 NBA Finals. And because of that, he was a key piece to the Warriors winning the 2022 championship. And with his efforts, he was awarded a four-year, $109 million contract in the 2022 offseason. Wiggins is just heading into his prime, and he's pretty much set to be a cornerstone for the Warriors here going forward, especially as Steph, Clay, and Draymond age. Wiggins may not have had the career that you think of with number one overall picks as far as being like a superstar level player, but he still developed into an all-star and was an important piece to a championship team. So unless Wiggins has had a very good NBA career and should continue to be that way throughout his time with the Golden State Warriors and wherever else his NBA journey takes him. At number two, we have Jabari Parker. After high school, he spent one year at Duke and was then drafted second overall by the Bucks in the 2014 draft. His season at Duke was pretty solid, averaged around 19 points and eight rebounds with about a block and a steal on really solid shooting splits. He carried that over into his first few years in the NBA, but he unfortunately tore his ACL midway through his first year. Year. He bounced back though and had a nice 2016 season and then averaged over 20 points per game in the 2017 season. But unfortunately through that season as well, he also tore his ACL. He had a solid comeback season in 2018, but the Bucks didn't want to keep him and he ended up signing with the Chicago Bulls on a two-year $40 million deal. But then the Bulls didn't want to keep him and he was traded to the Wizards near the 2019 trade deadline. He played solid with them as well, but then he signed with Atlanta in the 2019 off season. He was then traded to Sacramento midway through the 2020 season and didn't really get much playing time with them over the year that he was with them. He was let go by Sacramento early on in the 2021 season and then signed with Boston. He was with them for a few stints during the 2022 season as well as the 2021 season prior, but he didn't get much playing time with them either. He's kind of been out of the NBA for about the past two to three years, but he was reported to be working out with the Phoenix Suns earlier in the 2023 summer, but then he was going to play with the Milwaukee Bucks summer league team, but ended up backing out due to a family matter. In Parker's NBA career so far, he's always been a solid scorer, but really the other parts of his game didn't develop and he didn't do much else outside of scoring and rebounding. And because he didn't really improve necessarily in like, you know, playmaking and defense, Really not many NBA teams are willing to give him an opportunity. I still think he is an NBA level talent and can have a successful career, but I think at this point in his career, it's about getting the right opportunity. But like I said, I still think he can succeed. He's got a lot of potential, still have a solid NBA career, just a matter of getting in the right situation. But he still had a really solid year in 2017, kind of showed the potential of what he could be next to Giannis as a number two option. And unfortunately, just with injuries and other matters, things really haven't panned out the way most thought for Jabari Parker. But nonetheless, he's had a solid NBA career. It's not like he hasn't had an impact on the teams he's been on. You know, he's been a solid scorer, been a solid rebounder, like I said. But hopefully he can find another NBA opportunity soon that he can get back in the league and show what he can do. 
At number three, we have Julius Randle. He spent one year at Kentucky with an absolutely stacked college roster. They were an eight seed, but he helped lead them to the national championship game. At Kentucky in his one season there, he averaged around 15 points and 10 rebounds and had a really good season overall. After that, he was drafted seventh overall by the Lakers in the 2014 NBA draft, but he broke his leg at the beginning of the 2015 season and basically missed his whole rookie year. He would spend the next few seasons with the Lakers and he greatly improved as a scorer and a playmaker there and after around 16 points and 8 rebounds in the 2018 season. But the Lakers didn't want to keep him and he signed with the Pelicans in the 2018 offseason on a two-year deal. There he averaged a career high in points during the 2019 season at around 21 per game, also averaged around 8 rebounds, 3 assists, and improve his three-point percentage to around 34%. He then signed with the Knicks in the 2019 offseason on a three-year deal, and then he became the NBA's most improved player and made an All-NBA team in the 2021 season. That year, he averaged around 24 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists, and shot around 40% from three. In the 2022 season, though, he kind of regressed a little bit. The Knicks didn't make the playoffs, and he kind of struggled, and shooting percentages greatly dipped compared to the previous year. But he had a great bounce-back year in 2023, and average a career high 25 points per game and once again made another all-star team. Randall is still a cornerstone for the Knicks here going forward, and he still has three years left on his current extension. So with that, him and Jalen Brunson should continue to form a nice duo in New York for the foreseeable future. At number four, we have Aaron Gordon. After high school, he spent one year at Arizona and averaged around 12 points, eight rebounds, two assists, on solid shooting splits, he did only shoot 42% from the free throw line, but still he had a solid overall season and ended up being the number four overall pick in the 2014 draft for the Orlando Magic. He spent his first six and a half seasons with the Magic and developed into a really nice overall player, greatly improved his defense, his playmaking, his shooting as well. Overall just became a really nice player for the Magic. He helped lead them to a few playoff bursts in the 2019 and 2020 seasons, but he was traded to the Nuggets midway through the 2021 season when the Magic decided to go into more of a full rebuild and he became a crucial piece to the Nuggets trying to contend for a title and they did end up winning the 2023 championship and Aaron Gordon was a huge piece to that just his defense his playmaking his ability to do all the dirty work that really helped the Nuggets win the championship and he's the perfect pairing in the front court next to Nikola Jokic there he should be a crucial piece to the Nuggets for at least the next few years he's got a couple years left on his current contract but with the Nuggets financial situation and with the new CBA implications it's unclear whether he'll be there long term at least for now Gordon should be a crucial player to the Nuggets trying to repeat in 2024 but yeah Aaron Gordon's had a really solid overall career and has developed into a really nice all-round player for the Nuggets. At number five we have Andrew Harrison. He spent two years at Kentucky with his twin brother Aaron and helped lead Kentucky to the national championship game along with Julius Randle in 2014. He averaged around nine points and four assists there but the shooting splits weren't the most efficient. However he was still drafted and he was drafted 45th overall by the Phoenix Suns in the 2015 draft. He never played for the Suns though and he ended up spending his first two and a half seasons with the Grizzlies. He had a pretty productive sophomore season as a backup point guard, averaging around nine points and three assists. But after that season, Memphis let him go. His shooting efficiencies still weren't the best. And with that, the Grizzlies didn't really want to keep him. During that 2019 season, he then signed two-way contracts with both the Cleveland Cavaliers and the New Orleans Pelicans, but they both waived him. He actually also signed a training camp deal with the Golden State Warriors in September 2019, but he was waived right before the season in mid-October. He hasn't got another NBA opportunity after Golden State, and he's been playing with various overseas teams and in the G League since. He played with the Warriors G League team in the 2020 season after they waived him from the main roster, and he had a solid season there as their starting point guard. But after, he played in China, then went back to the Windy City Bulls in the G League, but only played four games with them. And then last season, he played professionally in Turkey. And at the recording of this video, I'm unsure where he'll play during the 2024 season, but I think he can still get into the NBA at some point later on in his career. I'm not sure when that will be, but he's kind of been going back and forth between overseas and the G League. So I have to imagine he'll get some other opportunity at some point. He's a taller guard who can shoot, who can play make, who can play good defense. So like I said, I'm sure with that skill set, I think he can get another NBA opportunity again. And that is what happened to the five players ranked above Joel Embiid in high school. I have a few other ideas for what I want to do with this series, but as always, if you guys have any ideas on what I should do, let me know down in the comments below. I'm always open to suggestions. So thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.